Welcome to Altium Designer PCB Introduction, as we start to look at the PCB side of Altium Designer. In this module, we will address the basic PCB preferences and their effects. Opening up the PCB preferences by left-clicking on the gear icon, we see there are a number of subfolders. The general folder has a few important settings. Let's start with Online DRC. When checked, the Online DRC provides live checking and feedback on the PCB. This can be helpful when performing placement as well as routing with active feedback guiding the layout engineer's efforts. One quick example of the online DRC in operation is illustrated by overlapping two components when moving one. Looking at the HDR1 connector, moving it over, we see a green overlay error markings indicating that there is a DRC violation. Right-clicking on the error overlay brings up a pop-up menu, and we can select the violations option to view all of the error details. One thing to note, even with the online DRC checking disabled, trace routing will still follow the rules, it just won't highlight the errors actively. Running DRC error checks is always recommended prior to releasing a PCB for fabrication. We will run DRC checks in a later module. Altium's preferences are extensive and allow the user to customize their environment. As a reminder, while this window's up, hitting the F1 key will open up the online documentation and we can look at fuller details there. I would encourage you to try this and explore some of the many features. There are a few options for the object selection snapping in the PCB. Snap to center causes the crosshairs for the mouse to snap to the object's reference point. Normally pin one or the center of the object depending on how it was created. If this is not checked, then the place you select an object locates the crosshairs while you're moving it. I generally keep this enabled to ensure that the objects stay on grid. With Snap to Center checked, you can also add the Smart Component Snap to allow the mouse to jump to the nearest pad of the associated component. I generally don't use this option, but it can be helpful if you're focused on placement of a component using a particular pad, say, for an RF chain. A number of these settings are helpful, and I would suggest starting with these. I typically employ the Shift-Click to Select option seen here. Clicking on the Primitives button opens up a pop-up window where a list of primitives is shown. This allows us to select or not select a particular primitive by holding down the Shift key. As you can see here, the Polygon, Region, and Split Plane require us to hold the Shift key down before we can select them. I find this helpful when the PCB design contains a mix of primitives, and normally I want to move components and traces, but not polygons. Having this checked, is a time saver. So looking at the PCB, without the shift key, clicking on C2 only selects the capacitor. But holding down the shift key before you click allows us to pick either C2 or the polygon. Clicking on the polygon area while holding the shift key selects and highlights the top layer polygon. Turning our attention back to the general preferences, we see auto pan options that allow us to adjust the speed of the auto panning while moving components. The Polygon Rebuild is a useful option allowing for the automatic repouring of any polygon that is affected by an edit, say moving a component or adding or removing a track where the polygon exists. Moving to the Display folder, we'll start with the setting shown. I normally have Highlight in Full checked to really bring out the selected object fully in the PCB's view. The Layer Drawing order provides a means for specifying the ordering of the various layers being displayed. You can change it by selecting the layer and hitting Promote or Demote to move it up or down. I find the default ordering works well for most applications, but you can try playing with it and seeing how it affects the actual view of the PCB. The next folder is the Board Insight folder. This includes the display modes and color overrides. These provide the user with more options to drive the PCB view. Here in the Board Insight display folder, we have a number of different options for viewing. One that's very useful is the available singer layer modes. I would recommend checking all three of these to allow you to cycle through them while viewing the PCB. To cycle through them while you're looking at the PCB, hold the shift key down and tap the S key. First tap, second tap, and third tap, we're looking at just that one layer. And now the fourth tap returns us to the full display mode. I use this quite often when I wanted to get a very clear view of the current active layer. Turning our attention to the Board Insight modes, one option that some find useful is the Display Heads Up information. 
If this is enabled, it provides live feedback to the user based on the active mouse location. Shift-H will toggle the state of the heads-up display. If it's open, it'll close it, and if it's closed, it will open it. The last group of preference settings we'll look at are for the interactive routing group. There's a lot going on here, and I would suggest starting with the settings that you see. That said, the general categories deserve some discussion, starting with routing conflict resolution. Here we have a number of options for the routing behavior while adding tracks to the PCB. I generally do not recommend the ignore obstacles or the stop at first obstacle as they can cause issues by their very nature. Ignore obstacles allows you to route willy-nilly and ignores things like shorts. This can allow initial routing, but then there's the cleanup needed afterwards, and most importantly, DRC checking must be done. Stop at first obstacle is a helpful option in that it stops the routing when you encounter any obstacle, but I generally rely on seeing that the route is stopped and or trying to get around a blockage with this not being checked. The current mode shows which of the above modes are active for the routing and can be used to change it, as you can see here. The interactive routing options provide the user with the ability to direct the tracks as they're being laid down. I generally only use the 90 or 45 restriction and automatically terminate routing options to speed up the process for the manual track placement. If that is not checked, it will allow you to go into a any angle mode, which I find not very useful. One of the most useful options is the automatically remove loops and the subcategory of remove net antennas. These can help with the rerouting of nets by eliminating duplicate net connections made redundant due to newly added tracks. I do on occasion uncheck the Remove Loops option to allow me to place parallel tracks on different layers for things like power, or when I was creating a 3D antenna for a customer design. I disabled this feature, added the parallel tracks, and then re-enabled for other routing. Just remember to uncheck it if you need to rework those nets with duplicate tracks if you want to keep them. I once lost a lot of my effort when I added a VIA to such a net, and the tool cleaned up the parallel tracks. To recover from that, I just hit Ctrl-Z. The routing gloss effort is a helpful feature allowing the user to draw tracks to be smoothed or glossed while being added. I generally start with the strong setting and progress to weak, and sometimes off as I fine-tune the layout and need to add small segments that may be viewed as non-optimal and glossed out by the higher gloss settings. One example where I set it to off was the creating and tuning of a PCB antenna. The other settings you may explore or use the F1 key to dive deeper. For now, these preferences will be enough to get us going on the PCB. This concludes Module 14, PCB Introduction, where we looked at the PCB preferences in Altium and their effects on the PCB. Please do Module 14, PCB Introduction Exercise.